Okay, so, remember Codename Kiss Next Door? Of course you do. It was one of Cartoon Network's longest-running shows, its pilot premiering on TV in 2001, and the show proper running from 2002 all the way to 2008. It lasted nearly a decade. Like, when it began, Johnny Bravo and Courage were still running, and KND ended only two years before Regular Show and Adventure Time came on the scene. That's insane. If you ask me, this show was ahead of its time. Like, a lot of elements you'd find in modern animation, especially the popular picks, are almost all found in KND. Whoa, it's a wacky, over the top Cartoon Network show with 11 minute segments. But there's a wild and deep overarching story? There's continuity? An adequate amount of lore and world building? It's all here. Kids Next Door was a blueprint for the deep, dark story cartoons of today. This show was one of a kind, and in my mind, this was the face of Cartoon Network. It perfectly encapsulated the energy of the channel's brand at the time, while providing a pretty important message for childhood. A show that focuses on the flaws of adults and the disconnect between children and teenagers on an exaggerated scale. A show that made childhood feel like this super cool exclusive club that we'll miss when we're older, even though we'll barely be able to remember it. I mean, I definitely can't remember my early childhood, but that just might be the trauma. However, like all good things, Kids Next Door and childhood had to come to an end, and the team behind the show understood this, firing off on all cylinders of its sixth season, including a game-changing TV movie, an engrossing final arc, and a satisfying but kinda strange hour-long conclusion, Operation Interviews. The catch, though, was that this finale was extremely open-ended, without necessarily leaving us on a cliffhanger. That's because behind the scenes, Kids Next Door creator Tom Warburton, often referred to as simply Mr. Warburton, was planning more. He knew that this chapter was over, but these characters in the world naturally lent themselves to a new chapter. He wanted the characters to grow with the audience. He wanted a sequel series. Galactic Kids Next Door. You may have heard of it. This channel alone has brought it up numerous times over the years. But I don't believe anyone's made a video on what it is and the story behind it in great detail. A glimpse of Mr. Warburton's vision was shared on the internet and didn't spread like wildfire. Because it was 2015 and animation discussion on the internet is much different from back then. Don't get me wrong, the animatic did pretty good for 2015. But if it happened today, I would argue we'd probably see the series happen we would probably see something get greenlit. So let me break down all of it. Why the end of the original Kiss Next Door was vague in some parts, why it was meant to spin off into something bigger, and the creator's attempt at making that something bigger actually something, briefly shaking up a smaller animation community. Welcome to Galactic Kids Next Door. Galactic Kids Next Door rules! Oh no, what have you done? The final season of Coding Kids Next Door focused on the mystery of the Splinter Cell, a rumored faction within the Kids Next Door that are basically extremists, desiring to wipe out every single adult on the planet Earth. A departure from the KD's mission to reprimand evil adults. The Splinter Cell was consistently teased throughout Season 6 with these ominous voice altered silhouettes that end up being Number Infinity and Number 74.239, the latter of which has always been present throughout a bulk of the series, so that was mind blowing. And the former was a character who only really showed up in Operation Treaty because his entire existence is bait for a sequel that doesn't exist. Nigel Uno, I am your father. In the penultimate episode, Operation Treaty, during the midst of an intense battle between the KND and the deceitful teenagers, Chad, aka number 274, is revealed to be a secret agent who never stopped working for the KND. Every single appearance after his full betrayal was actually 274 helping out behind the scenes. If that wasn't jaw-dropping enough, he also claims that there is no Splinter Cell. It was simply a front, covering up the existence of another group that transcends the kids next door. Something that even number 362 didn't know about. But before Nigel Uno can learn the name of this group, Chad is interrupted by number infinity, who proceeds to defy fucking gravity with what I can only assume to be snot pads, as after informing 274 that number one cannot know what he's been chosen for and their position has been compromised, 
The two of them fucking stick their fingers up their nose. You know, the booger thing. But this time, the boogers extend out of their nostrils, covering their entire bodies. And their physical forms dissipate before our very eyes. And then number one's narration reveals that they were never seen again? What the hell? Yeah, you don't get much closure on these characters because again, setting up a sequel that didn't get greenlit. But you do find out what number one was chosen for in the series finale, which aired on January 21st, 2008. Operation Interviews is wild. Watching Sector V way past the stage of all grown up. In live action, no less. The interviewer, who's really father in disguise, somehow has managed to temporarily recommission Sector V in order to recount the events of Number One's disappearance during another delightful children birthday cake escapade. You know how that was a thing every season? And how they almost always fumbled the bag by the cake being destroyed or ruined? Yeah, of course that's gonna be the series finale. And they rope in as many characters as possible. Except Maurice, what the hell? Well, to be fair, Operation Treaty was the finale for the teenagers. So it makes sense they don't get much spotlight here. But the twist on the delightful children's birthday this time is that the cake is a lie. Well, it's just a cupcake. And the big gigantic cake is really a spaceship designed to look like a cake, but yeah, you can't eat this dog. Number 74.239 reveals that number one out of every single operative on Earth has been chosen to join the Galactic Kids Next Door. The GKND continues the battle of adult tyranny on a universal scale. It sounds like a pretty big deal. However, should number one accept, he can never return home. I don't think he really had a choice though, because even his parents are there, recommissioned, in order to say their goodbyes. We already knew number one's dad was number zero. We all saw that incredible movie. But they sneak in one more reveal, that number one's mom was actually number 999, the first female operative in the seventh age of the Kiss Next Door. Eventually, Sector V storms in, being able to track down number one, and the team has a heartfelt goodbye that I'm still crying over at 3 a.m. Number one blasts off into the sky, and aside from from wrapping up the interview framing device, that's pretty much the end of Codename Kids Next Door. Though the final live action scene reveals that number one has presumably returned from the GKND as number five heads to the moon base for a reunion. Okay, you guys are like 50. Go get brunch or something. But little do we know, this wasn't meant to be the complete end of the Kiss Next Door franchise. And the missing records of number one's time in the GKND was a calculated decision. Seven years later, in March of 2015, something completely out of the blue happened. A mysterious Facebook profile named Number Vine began spreading around a website that may sound a bit familiar to KD fans RainbowMonkeys.com. An actual website for the running parody of Care Bears and other stuffed animal products? Okay, sure, why not see where this goes? To this day, the URL will take you to the illustration of a big red button that reads, Push Here for Fun. Performing this action will lead to a seemingly innocent sign-up page for the Rainbow Monkeys Friendly Friend Club, accompanied with motion tweens of the mascots and text read across the two ears of a giant rainbow monkey head that urges you to join now. As you probably expect, there's more than meets the eye, as clicking on the glowing pink nose will cause the rainbow monkey facade to dissolve into the main event, the blue rainbow monkey head transitioning into one large oval in front of two smaller circles, each shape filling with the photorealistic visage of what we can only soon to be aliens, in particular, GKND operatives. Here we are, the Galactic Kids Next Door database, and putting the numbers and names of various characters throughout the series will inform you of their current status, and it's such a simple yet effective way to give us new lore and get old fans excited to jump back into this world. For example, number one says trial pending, the rest of Sector V results in planetary decommission pending, number nine, aka Maurice is highly dangerous. Apparently, number 74.29 and number infinity have completed their Earth missions. And in putting father will just give you danger, danger, danger. But by far, the most intriguing part at the time was the password galactic, which would take you to a countdown designed to conclude on April 1st, 2015, a few weeks away at the time. What the hell is this? Is this official? I'm going to assume it's official. Uh, heads up. It technically wasn't official. I was still in high school as this was going down, and no exaggeration, for a few weeks there, I think RainbowMonkeys.com took over my life. 
Animation-wise, I was at a weird point where I was kind of falling off of cartoons. Adventure Time and regular show began to lose me for a brief period, and I was getting way more into streaming services. Binging shows I've put off watching for years. Like, of course, The Office and that 70s show. The only thing animated I really kept up with was Gravity Falls and Naruto, one of which felt like it was constantly on hiatus after its biggest reveal ever, and the other was stuck cranking out filler after filler for most of the year. But between Rebel Taxi videos and Cartoon Network slowly pulling me back in as I began to really get into Steven Universe, I was still keeping tabs. So when I caught wind of this website, I was absolutely engrossed. I was out here getting all my friends excited, getting my cousins excited, and of course, getting myself overly excited and setting expectations way too high. But considering this was one of the highest points of animation discussion, where people constantly pleaded for the networks to bring back the older hits, I was enamored with the idea of one of my favorites actually coming back, especially as I mentioned in the beginning, Candy was one of the first serialized cartoons on a channel like Cartoon Network. So I really wanted to see what they could do at a time where serialization really began to pick up at Cartoon Network and Disney channel. But then, a few days later, things got crazier, as a fully voiced animatic of a teenage number one, presumably committing genocide, was on my computer monitor. Yes, you heard me right. A battle damaged Chad is pleading for the Earth's future. Number 74.239 is revealed to be an alien. I know someone out there had to theorize that way back in 2008. Number one is interacting with various unseen GK and D operatives. And the ringleader of it all sounds very much like an alien equivalent of the delightful children. <laughs> The decision does not come lightly. The decision is... Don't do it, Nigel! This isn't what the kids next door is about! Surprise! Let's fucking go. I was losing my mind. This was it. The voice cast is back. This has to solidify it. Oh my god. So this is legit, right? GK and D is becoming a cartoon, yeah? As it turns out, this animatic was leaked after being found within the website's code by sleuthing fans. But, even as it became obvious the creator was aware of what was going down, the countdown persisted. Number Vine kept up appearances. A cryptic video featuring Number Four's voice calling out for a response even popped up. Come in, Number Vine! Are you there? You hear me? The countdown ended. On April 1st, 2015, at midnight Easter Standard Time, another animatic popped up, featuring Numbers 3 and 4 conversing with Number Vine, who was revealed to be the true identity of another prominent character in the original series. Lizzie Devine, Number 1's ex-girlfriend. That honestly blew my mind, but it's a reveal that, even if it's a retcon, makes so much sense to me. Now my human disguise is acting up! Who was running the tech department while I was on Earth? Number moron! Holy f She looked better as a plant. I heard that! Operation Treaty established that Number One's audition for the KND was very impressive, so of course they would set another operative to keep an eye on him and give him some sort of test, though I'm not too sure where the budding romance fell into all of that. This animatic pinned the first animatic leaking on Kooky and Wallaby as if they misunderstood Number 5's request to release it once the countdown ended. After regaining composure, Lizzie urges for Sector V to evacuate the planet, getting every single living being as far away from Earth as possible, before being assaulted by an unknown force and losing connection. And after replaying the first animatic, we get a voiceover from Number 4, hitting us with the cold reality that there would be no plans for a Galactic Kiss Next Door series. But... There should be. Thanks for helping us, Troy! I was crushed, defeated, put down, left for dead. I couldn't sleep that night, or the night after that. I've made huge mistakes, and I don't know who I can trust anymore. I spent most of March spinging all of K&D thinking, thinking I could go back to this world. Do you know how much homework I neglected? I couldn't understand. I just wanted to know what happened. Well, little did I know. I unknowingly participated in an experiment, the GKD experiment. And in order to really understand the big picture, we're going to have to go back in time to 2014. Mr. Warburton began to envision JKD towards the end of the original series and pitched it a few times to Cartoon Network over the following years. But according to him, no one ever bet at the idea. But then, one day, a new idea hit him. Why not make a kind of guerrilla style pitch? Just make something and not even say we did it. See what kind of reaction we get. And who knows, maybe Cartoon Network would get excited. So he crafted that wonderful script, sat on it for a bit as he worked on other projects, 
And then, after finishing the pitch for a new show idea he was working on, Mr. Warburton emailed KD director and storyboard artist Guy Moore. Hey, uh, Mr. Moore! So. What you doing? Really? That's great. Want to do something fun? And most likely, in the long run, useless? But regardless, a fun experiment? He was in. Now here's the thing, if Cartoon Network doesn't want to make Galactic Is Next Door, Mr. Warburton can't make it. End of story. He may have created these characters and this show, but legally, all of that belongs to Cartoon Network. So what happens to the series is ultimately up to them. That's just showbiz. Still, they took the risk and they went all out. After Guy Moore handled the storyboard, Mr. Warburton rounded up a portion of the beloved voice cast. Ben Diskin, Jason Harris, Dave Woodenberg, Jennifer Hale, and Cree Summer. And not only were they all aboard for this passion project, they were in for free. Same with David Guerrero, sound engineer and guitarist for the series. And the recording session went great. Mr. Warburton wishes he took pictures. But the authenticity of Kids Next Door didn't stop there. Dave Quarter, editor on the original series, stepped in to compile the animatic. And for the finishing touches, musician Steve Rucker and sound effects expert Lou Esposito stepped in to work their magic. The animatic was completed, and it was fire. But how were they gonna get it out there? This is where everything really began to be put to the test. They created an entire alien alphabet, the Rainbow Monkeys website, and of course, the Number Vine Facebook profile. A personality that would go around Kiss Next Door fan pages, posting cryptid images of hidden codes and clues that were largely ignored until... <laughs> Number Vine posted a picture of the Rainbow Monkeys website. The screenshot was in the browser with the URL visible. And a bunch of bookmarks that made it obvious that this was Mr. Warburton, but you know, let's not worry about that. Fans showed up. People were invested. Word spread across all the little animated sections of the internet. Once more, animation discussion on the internet was a lot smaller than it is now. Fans figured out how to get to the countdown. They began to decipher the alien alphabet. The hype train was building. But then, 10 days before the big day, everything changed. Mr. Warburton was having pizza with his son's soccer team, going through his Facebook messages, when he reads a message that more or less says, OMG, LOL dude, no way. Just saw the Galactic His Next Door video. Kate, thanks. See ya, bye. And then his phone died. I'll let Mr. Warburton's words take over for the next part. I was in a total panic and had no way of finding out what was happening. When I finally got home hours later, I dove onto the computer and watched the madness unfolding. There, on YouTube, was our super secret video under the title, New Series Announced! And it was already approaching 100,000 views! After a bit of research, we discovered that someone had done a little digging and found the video just sitting in her website's directory, and then decided to put it up on YouTube. Granted, we hadn't thought anything like this would happen, so we didn't take the appropriate precautions. So it wasn't very hard to get into the website. And now operatives everywhere were losing their minds. Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and especially Tumblr. They were exploding with cheers, theories, speculation, and even fan art. I sat up for hours, monitoring the insanity. Was I mad about the leak? Hells no! A hacker breaking in was so perfectly Kids Next Door! We couldn't have written a better script. But there was just one problem. The countdown was supposed to be the launch of the teaser. Now everyone thought it was leading to an official announcement of a Galactic Kiss Next Door series, which it wasn't. So what to do? We couldn't have nothing when the countdown ended. So I did what any resourceful candy operative would do. I wrote a script. The video was climbing fast reaching over 350,000 views. It continued to spread beyond the animation corners of the internet, winding up on even a Kanye West message board. I mean, to be fair, with Kanye's love for animation, he's probably investing in a real-life mansion-sized treehouse as we speak. We even got big heapings of misinformation, which Mr. Warburton mentions in his blog, but I remember it firsthand. A phony GKD Tumblr that would answer questions with the false promises of GKD already being in the works, that it'll be darker and edgier, and we'd see the return of various characters. People claiming that they were working on the show. And of course, I believed it, like the sucker I am. The Kids Next Door fandom resurrected. Questions on the animatic grew by the minute. People didn't know if this was official, if these were the actual voice actors, if Mr. Warburton was involved, and of course, what was going to happen on April 1st. 
With less than 10 days left, Mr. Warburton and Mr. Moore decided to do the second animatic, which would serve to explain what happened with the initial animatic and let fans down gently. Once this installment was scripted and began the storyboarding process, Warburton rounded up Lauren Tom, Dee Bradley Baker, Dave Wittenberg, and Gray Delisle Griffin, recording once more with David Guerrero at LA Studios, working against their own countdown quite the twist of fate. Dave Corder put it all together, having to take on both sound effects and music editing this time around, and they were able to finish the animatic one day before April 1st. As we approach April 1st, more and more Candy fans resurfaced, anticipating the start of a new chapter in the franchise. Of course, Mr. Warburton was crushed knowing this wasn't the reality of the situation. Uploading the video at the exact moment to avoid leaking again, they saw the number of site visitors grow. Hundreds upon hundreds of people arrived, and then the video went live. There are no plans for a Galactic Kids Next Door series. How I described my feelings towards the situation earlier is probably how fans felt. Disappointed and kind of upset, even though we knew this relied on Cartoon Network. And hey, K&D fans didn't go out without a fight, creating a petition that reached 28,000 signatures, which, again, for 2015, not bad. Not bad at all. The petition is now closed, but the final tally was 68,000. 511 supporters, and I have no doubts that if this happened today, the amount of signatures would absolutely blow this out of the water. But did Cartoon Network ever acknowledge this whole stunt? Did it capture their attention at all? Well, let's once again look at Mr. Warburton's words for the aftermath. Yes, some folks at Cartoon Network did take notice, with a couple helpful hints dropped by me. And we talked a bit, and there was some chatter about bringing up GKD in some meetings. I mean, there are definitely some pro KD operatives still at Cartoon Network, but after a long wait, I received this. Sorry to say that sadly, there isn't interest in doing more KD at the moment. <sighs> I knew it was a long shot, but I still can't help but to be disappointed. But I still think it'll happen one day. Missions alter, tastes change, regimes switch. So GKD can wait, good things always do. Anyway, thanks for taking this ride with me and all the operatives who made it happen. If anything, it proved that there are a ton of candy operatives ready to mobilize at a moment's notice. And one day, we'll take over the world. So, now that it's been quite a bit of time, let's be honest and ask the question, will Galactic Kiss Next Door ever happen? Well, let's evaluate why it was such a long shot to get it greenlit in the first place. The television landscape has shifted greatly over the years. As we know, streaming has begun to overthrow cable as a champion of entertainment. But back in 2015, this wasn't the case. Streaming only just found its footing, attracting more consumers by the month. Cable ratings were still strong, though, as this was still a time where a million viewers per episode was considered satisfactory on Cartoon Network. This is important to address because the target demographic simply had no desire for k &D. In Cartoon Network's eyes, this was an old show that had a conclusion that didn't get reruns, and their target demographic doesn't really think about it all too much, if they knew what it was at all. Why would they want to reboot that in 2015? But now we're in 2020. Here we are in the future, and a lot of what Mr. Warburton said has come to fruition five years later. The AT&T merger has changed everything at Warner Media, including Cartoon Network. And again, streaming is inherently internet. And unlike on cable, nostalgia has always reigned supreme. The mission has altered, the tastes have changed, and the regimes have definitely switched. And I think everything has shifted in a direction that could benefit Galactic Kids Next Door. We've already seen Cartoon Network's competitors dish out their own Nostalgia Blasted specials on streaming, often met with great reception from fans, and Warner Media has signaled that they want a slice of that pie, stating that they're looking at their library of beloved animated characters with talent that knows how to revitalize them. While I think a Galactic Kids Next Door series wouldn't fit on traditional television today, I do think either a movie or a limited series on HBO Max, like Adventure Time Distant Lands, would be perfect. And it was just revealed the original series will be joining the service in January 2021, so maybe viewership will justify giving Mr. Warburton a ring. Though it is worth mentioning that in all of this, he's been serving as executive producer on Muppet Babies, a show that allows him to actually work with most of Sector V's voice talents on a regular basis. However, I'm hopeful when that wraps up, he'd be eager to take another stab at GKD. Or create a new show entirely because, man, <laughs> rewatching episodes for this video affirmed to me that this man should just be constantly given an animated project to helm. Do I think GKD could still happen? 
Absolutely. Just not as a multi-season epic. A special or mini-series of specials would be a nice middle ground for both sides, and I imagine would receive acclaim and attention from fans around the world, and more importantly to Warner Media, viewership on HBO Max, and money that's continually thrown at them through subscription cost. Do I think it will happen? That's a bit more tricky to make some bold prediction on. There are a lot of variables in the equation, and it's proven that fan interest can only go so far. But I know this. A G candy anything on HBO Max would rule. I know people would show up. I know Mr. Warburton and his team would deliver. There's no doubt in my mind. I hope that one day, we all get to be recommissioned and attend our battle stations. But until then, thank you for watching. Seriously guys, thank you for watching, this was a lot of fun to revisit, and I want to make more content on Kiss Next Door. In particular, there is some existing lore of Galactic Kiss Next Door that I would love to explore. So hopefully this does well, and I'll see you guys soon. Shout out to Jakey Bones for the incredible thumbnail, seriously, they always knock it out of the park. You can find them on Tumblr at Janky Bones, Twitter and Instagram at Bone Janky, and subscribe to their YouTube channel, all the links will be in the description. And we can't forget our amazing patrons. Seriously, thank you for supporting us this year, because it's definitely been a rough one. If you guys enjoyed this video, please throw it a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell for notifications, it really helps out. That being said guys, I hope you have an amazing day, and I'll talk to you next time. Peace out.